to pour painting with Ron. In today's video we're going to be playing around a little bit with the bloom technique. Now this technique is quite a bit different to anything else that I have showed you. The ingredients are quite a bit different as well. I thought I'd start off today by just going through the major components of a bloom pour and then I'll explain a little bit how I'm going to use it in today's painting. Now the bloom technique has got three main components. You need uh, something called a pillow for your paint to sit on and then you've got your colour layer on the top and then you have a third layer that we call the cell activator. Now the pillow layer of paint is your thickest, the colours are thinner and your cell activator is the thinnest layer. Now the pillow, the part that, that the colours slide on, rather than using plain ordinary acrylic artist paint, we use uh, an interior wall paint. So I've got here just um, a white um, acrylic water-based uh, wall paint. The brand is British Paints and I've selected the um, low sheen interior wall paint. So that's what you're looking for a low sheen acrylic water-based wall paint and that's your pillow. You'll see in a little bit how, we, how we're going to use that. Now for the colour layer, in a normal ordinary pour painting we'd mix our colours with a pouring medium such as flow troll or glue and water but this technique uses something completely different. The paints that we use need to be um, a high pigmented paint because they're stretched out quite a lot over your canvas. So the brand I'm using today is Joe Sonia's paints. Now they're quite expensive but you don't use much so in the end it works out to be okay. So these are very highly pigmented, they're quite thin which is useful for this um, technique as well. So the colours of Joe Sonia I'm using today, I'm going to see what happens if I use all of them, um, uh, blue, oh ultramarine blue, and we've got brilliant magenta, and we've got uh, yellow light, and aqua, and some naphthol crimson, and some brilliant violet. Now we could get mud with this but I'm going to see what happens today. We'll see what happens when we use them all. Now I'm going to mix those colours with um, a pouring medium that I'm going to need to make up myself. Now the pouring medium consists of these ingredients. Again we're going with a house paint but this time we're going to use um, a low sheen interior paint but it needs to be untinted. Now the person in the hardware store may say that doesn't exist or you can't use it without a tint in it but believe me you can. So you're looking for a low sheen interior paint and at the bottom it says extra bright. So that's what you're looking for. You might have something called deep base or mid if you use those ones, you're going to get weird things happening to your colours. But the extra bright keeps the colour true that you're mixing into it. So it's a low sheen, untinted paint, and you're looking for something that's like extra bright. It even says here, untinted. So I just got mine at Bunnings. It's a British Paints brand. And to adding to that, we're going to add two other ingredients. Um, Joe Sonia's Gloss Varnish, it's a water-based polyurethane, so Joe Sonia's Gloss Varnish, and this one, Minwax Polycrylic. Now I've since discovered you don't need the polycrylic, it's a polyurethane as well. It's imported from the US, you can't get it here in Australia, so it's really expensive. You don't have to use this at all, you can just use the Joe Sonia's Gloss Varnish which is a polyurethane as well. So I'm not going to buy this anymore, I'm using it because it was expensive. 
And after reading the warning labels on the back, um, I, there's another reason not to use it. There's all sorts of scary things on there about cancer and fumes and things like that. So I won't be using that anymore. So to make your pouring medium, you're going to need three parts of the um, paint, three parts of the untinted paint. And you're going to mix to that either two parts of the Joe Sonia's varnish or one part Joe Sonia's varnish and one part polycrylic if you happen to have access to that. So next time I'll just be using three parts of the paint to two parts of the varnish and I'll leave that one out. And I've just mixed it up in this squeeze bottle and to that I mix it to my paint so I use two parts of my mixed pouring medium to one part of the Joe Sonia's. If your paint is thicker, you may end up having to use three parts of your pouring medium to one part of the paint to get the consistency that you want. Because you want it thinner than your pillow paint. All right, and then on top of that, to get my, our cells, or well, they're not really cells, it's more like lacing you're going to end up with. To get the cells, you need to mix up a cell activator that you're going to put on top of your color layer. To do that, you need to use Amsterdam acrylic paint. This is a titanium white. So you need the titanium white Amsterdam acrylic. It doesn't work quite as well with other white paints. I've been told that the Amsterdam titanium white acrylic works the best with this particular technique. It's cheaper buying a big expensive bottle, but you can get it in little tubes as well. You really don't use much at all. So to mix up your cell activator, you need one part of the Amsterdam Titanium White and you mix that to either two or three parts of Floetrol. So you want a really, really thin mix. That's your thinner, thinnest mix. So the pillow is the thickest, your colours are in between and your cell activator is the thinnest. Clear as mud? I know it sounds complicated but once you've got everything mixed up it's not, not really that, that hard. All right. So what are we going to do with that today with our, our colours? Now some people with their, with their um, bloom technique, they, they put the pillow on and the colours and they, they put the cell activator in the middle and they might use a, a, a blow dryer to blow the cell activator across the colours, creating something that looks like a flower and then they tilt it and stretch it out to get their design. Now I've played a, around with that a little bit and I haven't quite been able to get it right yet. But I saw another person on YouTube using a cake spinner to spread out the paints across the canvas and that worked really well. So that's what we're going to play around with today. Now the cake spinner that I use is this one. I got it from my local art shop. It's a plastic banding wheel. I think they use it for um, ceramics decorating or pottery or something like that. But it's got ball bearings in it and it spins really well. It only cost me $17. But you can use a Lazy Susan or a cake decorator. Anything that spins easily that you put your canvas on. Now, if you're going to spin your canvas around on a cake spinner, you're going to have paint flying everywhere off the edges. So to catch that, you need something to protect your carpet or your table or your walls with. So I've got just a portable pet bath, or you can get a little baby pool or a cardboard box, a large cardboard box, anything that can catch the, um, the paint as it flies off your canvas. So I got this at Kmart, it was just $12. And I stuck some puppy training pads around the side to catch the paint. And when they get really dirty, I can just remove them and put some fresh ones on 
without ruining my portable pet pool. Right, so that's what we're going to use, and you'll see how that's done later. All right, oh, after all of that, the canvas I'm going to use today is a, a 40 centimeter by 40 centimeter stretched canvas. And as usual, I've prepared the back with my painter's tape and my large tacks, so it's easy to pick up and down. Now I'm going to prepare my paint on my table, but my puppy, pow puppy pool is on the floor there. So when we get to that part, then I'll take you down there and you'll see how that works today. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I've got my colors mixed up for today. As I say, I mixed up two parts of my pouring medium with one part of paint. And the consistency I was after was a little bit like the thick honey that I usually use. So you can see if I dribble it off the spoon, it just dribbles off like hot honey does. So that's sort of the consistency you want. If it's too thin, it will disappear into your pillow paint. Now I had these left over from another pour, so I've just mixed up my extra colours. You really don't need much for this technique. Um, so, first step is to put my pillow paint on the canvas. So I've, I've mixed my wall paint, the white low sheen acrylic paint, and I'm going to pour the pillow on here. Now as you'll see, it's really quite a lot of paint that I'm using. The idea is to have a, your biggest mound of paint in the middle or wherever you're going to put your colours so it can move out to the edges of your canvas carrying your colours with it as it goes. If it's too thin, your paint won't go anywhere and it will stay in the middle of your canvas. So we're going to use quite a lot. So I've just got this spout. I thought it would make things easier. So there's no water in it. It's just straight paint. That worked easier than using a cup. Now I'll just, because I'm going to use a spinner, I'll just move this paint out towards the edge of my canvas. I'll do the edges as well while I'm at it. Now it gets bubbles very easily. So don't shake your paint in the can. Use a, a paint stirrer or you're just going to get a gazillion bubbles that will ruin your painting. So just pretend as though you're going to paint a house or a wall while you're mixing it and mix it in the way you would if you were going to paint a wall. So just using a paint stirrer. I just picked up a plastic one from the hardware store. Now this is not a simple technique. I haven't played much with it yet. I'm still experimenting with how it works. Well, you can experiment with me. If it's a, a total failure, you probably won't see it on YouTube. But if I get a reasonable result, then you'll see it and hopefully you'll be a bit inspired to give it a go yourself. Probably not a good idea if you're brand new to pour painting because it is a bit trickier than the other other methods and you do need a whole raft of different ingredients. But when you feel as though you'd like to give it a go, why not? Before I start, I'll pour a bit more pillow paint in the middle just to give my colours something to move on. I 
I've tried the, the blow dryer technique, but it's been a failure every time. I thought this would be easier. As you can see, it's quite messy. You don't have to be too exact. It will dribble over the edges as you spin it out. to have it super level so long as you've got that pillow in the middle okay uh, do I still, oh yes I still have quite a lot in the middle I might just put a bit more now I thought I'm not going to do little circles or anything I might just drizzle my color on and see what happens I look I'm looking for sort of like a rainbow sort of effect happening today if you don't have enough pillow paint you won't get to the edges ah, okay now I might want my darkest color first and then I'll put that lighter colors on the top I'm just going to drizzle well, we'll see what effect that gives today that's sort of in the middle okay and then my blue I'll just shake it down to the bottom the squeeze bottles work better I didn't have enough squeeze bottles to put my new colors in but there wasn't much blue left hopefully it will be enough and some of this one You'll see what I'll do with the cell activator in a bit. And then we'll do the red. Hopefully I won't end up with mud. If I do, I won't try this technique this way anymore. last the yellow uh -huh. a bit scary let's see what happens now the 
the cell activator, remember, was one part of the, um, whatever the brand was, one part of the white titanium paint with three parts of Floetrol. Now, if you just pour it on, it sinks really quick underneath, and you don't want that to happen. You want to um, be able to have it stay on the top to create the lacing effect. So rather than pouring it on and have it disappear, I'm going to put a bit on my little paint spatula and then I'm going to dip this tool on the top so it's coated with the white and I'm going to wipe it across the top and I'll wipe it in like different directions to create like an interesting sort of design. We'll see if that works. So, I don't know if you can see it but I'll put a bit on my paint spatula coat the surface of my tool here. You don't need much. And I'll put it in the middle and I just want to drag it over the surface like so. And see how you end up with some sort of lacing happening already? That's what we want to see. Do it again here. You don't want to press it down into your pillow. I'm not too concerned about how the edges look because most of that's going to disappear when I spin it out. That's what creates the lacing, is this cell activator. Just wipe it off. It's going to be bright, I think. See how that spreads out. Ooh, that one wasn't very good. I don't much like that one, so I might have another go at that one. Bit more cell activator. So the idea is to keep your cell activator on the top. Don't press down too hard. You want to slide the cell activator over the colors and take the colors with you as you go. OK. 
Okay, how were we looking here? That's really nice. This one I'm not too sure about. That's better. Okay, now you want to give it time, or the cells a little bit of time, to pop up. And then we'll put it on our spinner and spin it out. We'll see what happens. I'm a little bit worried about this white bit here and this here, but you never know what's going to happen when you spin it out on the cake spinner. So we'll be back in a minute. I'll move my camera to my puppy swimming pool. By the time I'm set up, this should be all ready to spin out. Okay, so this is my puppy pool. As you can see, I've put the, the pads, so the puppy piddle pads along the side to catch the paint. I've got my spinner in the middle. And I've put some tape or masking tape on there just to stop my canvas from flying off while I spin it around. So I'll just get my canvas. Here's my canvas. Now I sort of stick it in the middle. Bit of a guess. Pop it in the middle. All right, and then the idea is to spin it so the paint is pushed to the edges. So let's see how we go. That was pretty slow. I'll wait till it slows down. I'll see if I can give it a bit of a, a bigger spin. That was a bit better. We'll see the magic happen, hopefully. If you don't have a spinner, you could tilt it, but I find this works better. How are we going? Ooh, it's looking interesting. The corners are getting covered. This corner isn't yet. It's looking very pretty. Then keep spinning until you're happy with how it looks. looking Ooh, that's looking really awesome will I give it one more little spin maybe one more It's hard to know when to stop. <laughs> okay. Ooh. That looks 
really cool. I'll take it off the spinner and put it on the table and then I'll bring you in for a closer look. Well, I think that turned out super well today. I didn't get any mud at all. But the Joe Sonia's colors, they're very highly pigmented, which is what you want. And the colors are just so vibrant and lovely. As you can see, it's just lovely. I hope it dries like that. Isn't it just beautiful? Well, I'm really happy with how this one turned out today and I'm definitely going to be, do more, be doing more experimenting with this technique. I found that the way I did it today is perhaps the simplest way of doing it. Others may disagree, but I find it works really well for me and I hope I've inspired you to give it a bit of a go yourself. Why not? Um, as usual, if you like the video that you saw today, please press the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please take a moment to subscribe. So happy painting and we'll see you next time.